Hi guys, this is part two to my skincare Q&A. So, where was I? Could you recommend a moisturizer? I have combo skin. I just purchased the Ordinary Grin Active Retinoid 2%, the Ordinary Niacinamide, the Ordinary Alpha Lipoic Acid, the Ordinary Vitamin C Suspension. And if it's not a too much, I'm a total newbie. I don't have a skincare routine at all, so step by step, please. Okay, the moisturizer I recommend. I recommend staying with the Ordinary since that's what you currently have. You know, a lot of these products are meant to be used together. The same brand, they're meant to all work together. So I recommend the Ordinary's natural moisturizing factors. Great. I have very acne prone combo skin and I use the natural moisturizing factors. It doesn't break me out. And then for your routine, for AM, I recommend you apply the vitamin C suspension and then the moisturizer, the natural moisturizing factors. And then your sunscreen. Hopefully you have your sunscreen. If not, you gotta go get one at the drugstore. My favorite is the La Roche Posay one, but that's expensive. Kind of. It's like the most expensive drugstore one, but it's going to be the most effective. Anyways, Make sure you're applying your sunscreen because if you're not applying sunscreen, every skincare product, anything you're doing is worthless, okay? All this preventing is worthless if you're not using sunscreen because that's the number one way to prevent sun damage. So vitamin C suspension, the reason I say that in the AM and only that for the AM is because there's tons of mixed reviews on niacinamide and vitamin C. From what I've concluded, you don't, and the ordinary website suggests, do not apply vitamin C with niacinamide because they cancel each other out. I think it depends on the type of vitamin C, but just to be safe, don't apply those together, okay? So AM, vitamin C suspension, and then your moisturizer, and that's all. So for PM, you're gonna apply your niacinamide, and then you're gonna apply your Grand Active Retinoid, and then your moisturizer. I personally recommend work your way up to applying niacinamide and retinoid together just to prevent irritation. So start off applying the retinoid only two times a week for two weeks. And then after two weeks, apply it three times that week and work your way up. I know the Ordinary's formulas are so mild, but retinoid is so strong and especially mixed with other stuff. You wanna prevent irritation, but again, the niacinamide is an incredible booster for the retinoid. You just wanna start out as slow as you can so your skin won't freak out, so you can figure out you know, if something is irritating it, if you're breaking out. For instance, Monday and Tuesday, only apply the niacinamide and the PM, the niacinamide, and then your moisturizer. And then Wednesday, try the niacinamide and the Grand Active Retinoid together. And then Thursday, just niacinamide. Friday, niacinamide and retinoid. Friday, just niacinamide. Sunday, niacinamide. And then work your way up to applying it every night. If you notice irritation with the niacinamide and retinoid, take a step back, cut out the niacinamide, and just apply the retinoid. So, you know, maybe Monday night, niacinamide. Tuesday, just your retinoid. Wednesday, just niacinamide in the PM. Niacinamide plus your moisturizer. You're always applying moisturizer, by the way, after this. Thursday, wash your face, apply the retinoid, and then your moisturizer. You know, you can alternate if that's easier, but the key is slowly work your way up to apply the niacinamide and the retinoid together. As for the alpha lipoic acid, they recommend only applying that twice a week. I suggest that's the only product you apply in the PM plus your moisturizer. Do not mix that with the retinoid don't mix it with the niacinamide. And that is supposed to just give you the most beautiful glow. That's actually a product on my list that I need to get. So maybe like Sunday and Wednesdays, pick two nights a week that you wanna apply that in the PM. So wash your face, apply the alpha lipoic acid, and then I don't know if you're supposed to wash it off. I think it stays on and it's a chemical exfoliator all night. And then apply your moisturizer. You need to figure out what works best for your skin. I don't know your skin. I don't know what your skin can handle. Maybe it's fine. The key is to just slowly work your way up that way you can prevent irritation and figure out what's irritating your skin if something is next question i'm doing a tca peel on april 1st when should i stop retin-a you want to stop your retin-a at least a week before the peel they say five to seven days but to be extra conservative stop nine days it depends how sensitive i don't know how sensitive your skin is you know if your skin's normal and can handle very strong things stop seven days but for me i'm so sensitive i would stop nine days before and then 
same thing you want to wait a good week before getting back on the retin-a you want to give your skin time to heal and the way you know it's healed if there's no redness there's no dryness you want to wait for your skin to completely peel so wait for that dryness and flakiness to completely come off before you start the retin-a again so give it a good seven days before the peel and a good seven days after the peel skincare routine to shrink enlarged pores please the thing to keep in mind with large pores is that's genetically predetermined by the way you can't physically shrink your pores but you can tighten them and help them look smaller the way you will achieve that is by exfoliating retinoids help as well and then a pore filler primer can help as well but by clearing out your pores and removing clogs can help reduce the appearance of, po of pores too if you have super oily skin your pores are going to look larger and typically they are bigger if you have oily skin and also the sun makes them worse the sun can enlarge them and make them look worse too so truly try to stay out of the sun so i have a couple suggestions cheapest number one is going to be witch hazel you can get that at the drugstore amazon target witch hazel is a great natural remedy and it kind of it just helps clean out your pores and just helps tighten them also the pixie glow tonic you can get that from i think only target um that's great for tightening your pores as glycolic acid which especially will help tighten your pores and clean out your pores um niacinamide from the ordinary is an incredible serum that's proven to help smooth out your texture and tighten your pores as well read the reviews a lot of people say that has tightened their pores so niacinamide by the ordinary lastly a retinoid so if you can get your hands on any retinol or retinoid products you could see if the drugstore has any products containing that or you could get a prescription retinoid you know you can use niacinamide and retinoids together that will definitely give you the best tightened pore look you can try to find a glycolic acid toner and that is great try to not use that the same night with retinoids just be safe yeah i hope that helps okay next i just started using retin-a on my night routine but i'm not sure if it goes after my toner or before everything else any suggestions so i asked what is everything else because typically first you want to cleanse your skin then you want to tone and prepare it then you want to apply your retinoid depending on the toner you by the way you never want to apply your retinoid on wet or damp skin it will be way too irritating and it absorbs too fast which makes it more irritating so you want it very dry when i was on it in my teens they said wait at least 15 to 20 minutes the dermatologist told me to wait at least 15 to 20 minutes before applying it after i wash my face and then you want to wait at least 20 minutes till you apply your moisturizer and i know that might not be practical <laughs> unless you're very good at starting your skincare routine early in the pm time yeah you don't want to apply your retin-a on wet skin so try 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 to wait like 5 10 15 minutes after you wash and tone then apply your retin-a then try to wait another 10 15 minutes to apply your moisturizer the sooner you apply your moisturizer it just will dilute the retin-a so if the retin-a if you find it's very harsh and irritating then apply your moisturizer faster because it will dilute it it will make it less irritating but anyways i asked what is the everything else that way it could help you figure out exactly where to put the retin-a so you said you double cleanse with the all clean balm from hymish hey i used to have that and then the survey hydrating facial cleanser then you use a toner either skin recovery enriched calming toner from paula's choice or pixie glow tonic then you follow with the buffet from the ordinary and then the misha time revolution then azelic acid suspension from the ordinary this three weeks only and then either rosehip seed oil from the ordinary or drunk elephant okay so the thing with this you got a lot going on there's a couple suggestions you don't want to apply azelic acid and retin-a together both are very going to make your skin very sensitive so you're good for only applying the azelic acid three times a week. By the way, I have a lot to say on this, so stay tuned. <laughs> so bear with me. I suggest applying the azelic acid in the AM since you have the Retin-A and the PM. Also, since you are new to Retin-A, and I think you said it's prescription Retin-A, my advice is start very slowly with this. The problem is some people start way too quick, jump into applying it every night, and your skin becomes a mess. It will get very irritated. Retin-A is very strong, very irritating. It can crack the skin, dry the skin, redness, you name it. And then it just makes it so sensitive your skin can't handle anything else. So my advice is slow and steady wins the race. Please start out applying the Retin-A only two times a week 
for two weeks. Then after two weeks, apply it three times a night for the next two weeks and then work your way up. I say give it a good two months before applying it every night, okay? And I know you might be impatient, but you have so many other great skincare products. You don't you slowly introduce this retin-A so you don't get burnt out, okay? I recommend avoiding acids with the retin-A for the first month. So this includes the Pixi Glow Tonic. Of course, you still wanna use that. So use the Pixi Glow Tonic on nights you are not using the retin-A. And I'll give you an exact example of the routine you should do in a minute. And after a month, some dermatologists say you can mix acids and retinoids, but it truly depends on your skin type. I personally can't because acids and retinoids together are very irritating for my sensitive skin. But if that's something you wanna work your way up to, apply the Pixi Glow Tonic, which will make drop your skin's pH because it's very acidic. And I would say wait at least 15 minutes to let your skin kind of level out and the pH to go back up before applying the retinoid and then apply the retinoid. But you know, if that's too much, at first you said you have that like recovery calming toner from Paula's Choice. Okay, you can use the buffet on your nights off and you can work your way up to applying the buffet before the Retin-A. It can be a great booster for the Retin-A. And then here's an example of your routine. The AM, wash your face. You can apply the Paula's Choice Calming Toner, you know, wait for it to dry, wait a couple minutes, and then apply azelaic acid, wait a couple minutes for that to absorb. I think you said your Misha moisturizer, apply that, and then your SPF, and then your marula oil. You never wanna apply rosehip seed oil in the AM because it's very light sensitive. Sun can break it down and actually cause a spot, age spots. So only apply the rosehip seed oil in the PM. Your marula can be in the AM, okay? So you said you only do the azalic three times a week. Keep in mind that can make your skin very sensitive. It can also itch and kind of burn at first. And that goes away after like a week or two. So yeah, you only apply that three times a week. So the other days you're not applying the azalic acid, you can apply the buffet in the morning. So cleanse, tone with the calming toner, and then apply the buffet, then your Misha moisturizer, and then marula oil. So just alternate the buffet with the azelaic acid. Now for PM, you want to cleanse, preferably on, on the days you're using your Retin-A, do the calming toner, wait for that to truly dry. So wait five to 10 minutes for that to dry, then apply your Retin-A, wait 10 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes, and then apply your moisturizer, then your rose hip seed oil. The longer you wait, the better, but if your skin's just so dry, you know, apply your moisturizer as soon as you can. You gotta figure out what is best for your skin, what your skin can handle. They say moisturizers dilute the Retin-A, but I think that's good in the beginning, personally. So, you know, you just gotta play around with it. So apply your Retin-A, wait five, 10, 15 minutes, however long you can. Then apply your moisturizer, then your rosehip seed oil. Rosehip seed oil is last to seal everything in. It will add hydration. It's also great at preventing scarring. So the nights you're not using Retin-A, because I want you to start only using Retin-A twice a week for the first two weeks. Cleanse, use your Pixi Glow Tonic. Then you can use the Buffet. And then you can use your Misha moisturizer and then rosehip seed oil. So alternate the glow tonic with the Retin-A. So use your glow tonic five nights a week and then the Retin-A two times a week for the first two weeks. And then the night you're not using, the two nights a week you're applying Retin-A, use your calming serum. The following two weeks, then work your way up, apply Retin-A three nights a week. So then only apply your Pixi Glow Tonic four nights a week. And then after two weeks, so now you're in month two, for the next two weeks, apply your Retin-A four nights a week. And then maybe, maybe this time, you know, you're what, four or five weeks in, try applying, wash your face, then apply the Pixi Glow Tonic, wait, five, 10 minutes, and then apply your Retin-A, and then wait another 10 minutes, then apply your moisturizer and your rose hip seed oil. And then work your way up. Maybe your skin can handle that perfectly fine. Work your way up to applying the Glow Tonic with the Retin-A and then save your calming serum for the AM. I recommend not applying the Pixi Glow in the AM just because it's so exfoliating. Acids are typically better in the PM, same with retinoids, just because they sensitize your skin so much and they just work better while you're sleeping in the darkness. Slow and steady wins the race. You wanna figure out what works for you, what your skin can handle, okay? So I'll try to write this in the comments below just to like 
reiterate what I said because I know this is confusing. So I'll write it in the comments below. <laughs> Next question. I'd love to know which skincare products are the best to use when trying to maximize hydration. You had mentioned in another video that using an oil cleanser could cancel out hyaluronic acid. I could have remembered that wrong. And I just think it's super fascinating. So <laughs> no, I didn't say an oil cleanser cancels out hyaluronic acid. What I said is I learned from um, Renee Relay is this, as a, this celebrity a t esthetician based in Texas. I love her blog. I think she's so smart and informative. She's been an esthetician for over 20 years and she personally doesn't believe in oil cleansers. This has made me want to switch up my routine and get rid of all oil cleansers. I used to use oil cleansers and I agree oil cleansers are amazing at getting the makeup off and trust me I wear a lot of makeup so it's great at removing the makeup but the problem with an oil cleanser is an oil is the thickest molecule. So when you are starting with an oil cleanser as your first step, you're leaving a barrier, you're leaving a film. Same with balms. A lot of balms have waxes in them. You're leaving residue on your skin because how do you know you're getting all that oil off? And I know they say use a washcloth to wipe it and you know, you might feel squeaky clean. A lot of oil cleansers have ingredients that truly help break down the oil and wash it all off. So I don't know. I think like the only safe one I, I personally would trust would be the Dermalogica pre-cleanse because Dermalogica is a scientific brand that's been around for a while so I would trust their oil cleanser but other than that I don't know the type of oil and the oil cleanser you're using mineral oils very clogging even like olive oil which I used to love using it's so thick it's gonna leave that oil residue because the way she put it think about like when you're scrubbing the dishes and think about when you have like this grime and oil on your pots and pans think about how hard it is to clean that off you have to use like your strongest dish detergent dawn or whatever off whatever you're using to cut through that oil and grease and chances are you're not using a second cleanser that is that strong to cut through that oil maybe you are i'm not i use very gentle cleansers that don't cut through oil so if you're starting off with an oil cleanser, chances are it's leaving that thick oil residue. The thing with oils, nothing can get through oil. It's thick, so there's no thicker molecule than oil. So if you're starting with that, then you're following serums and moisturizers aren't gonna get through that oil, AKA drying you out more. They're not really doing their job. It's just a waste of money. It can actually dry your skin out more. So if you find that your skin is very dry and dehydrated, it could be because of that oil. So it's good to use, instead it's good to use like a cleansing milk or a cleansing cream that can remove the makeup and then you know you can still double cleanse the magic in removing the makeup is in the washcloth you want you could use like a microfiber cloth or a very gentle baby washcloth very gentle for your face is key you know you want to truly get off all that makeup by using a cream cleanser or a cleansing milk you're not going to leave any waxy or oil residue so all your following products won't have to overcompensate and they will do their job and actually penetrate down into the pore and do what they're supposed to do. So I hope that makes sense. The biggest thing is oil cleansers prevent other serums and moisturizers from actually getting through your barrier because an oil is the thickest molecule. So that's why it should be the last step in your routine after your moisturizer and it will seal in everything, seal in moisture beautifully while you sleep and can actually help. So if your skin is dry and dehydrated, chances are you just kind of need to tweak your routine, get rid of an oil cleanser, add a cleansing milk. I'd be happy to suggest one and then use a toner and then your serums and moisturizers will penetrate and penetrate how they're supposed to. So. I hope that helped. I was devastated when I heard that she didn't believe in oil cleansers and that they don't work because I loved my oil cleanser for removing makeup. But I have found by using a cleansing milk that my skin is a lot healthier. I used to have these dry patches and I don't have them anymore. So I think my moisturizer is actually doing what it's supposed to, penetrating how it should. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Next question. Currently I'm using tretinoin prescription gel and I suffer from acne. I have combo skin what are some of the best ordinary products for my skin type? By the way, this is the last question, everyone. Okay, so you're, you're currently on tretinoin prescription gel. Could you let me know how long you've been on that, by the way, and how long you've had acne, and if you've seen any improvement? I'm just curious. But anyways, what are some of the best ordinary products for my skin type? For acne-prone skin, number one, azelaic acid. Their azelaic acid suspension 10%. Since you're using the prescription tretinoin and the PM, I imagine, use azelaic acid in the AM. Try to start 
about only using it three times a week because it can make your skin very sensitive, especially because you're on the tretinoin and it can make your skin itchy and kind of burn the first week or two while using it. So start out using it every other night or every other two nights, you know, but azelaic acid number one for the AM. Also the glycolic, ugh, my foot's asleep. I've been doing this so long. The glycolic acid, 7% toning solution. And then lastly, their AHA 30% plus BHA 2% peeling solution, which is a mask. It can be applied twice a week. That is going to be amazing at helping acne as well, as well as an oil. The rosehip seed oil is incredible for acne prone skin. It helps balance out the skin's pH and it's very soothing. It helps prevent acne scars as well. So since you're on the tretinoin and the PM, I imagine, wash your face, apply the glycolic acid solution two nights a week. You want to work your way up before applying that every night because it's so irritating. So apply the glycolic acid, start out, like apply it Monday and then like Thursday or whatever you want, but just apply glycolic acid to tone your skin twice a week. Wait a good 10 minutes after applying that before you apply your Retin-A. Apply your Retin-A, wait another 10, 15 minutes, apply your moisturizer, and then rose hip seed oil. As a last step to seal everything in, it will help condition your skin, soothe your acne. It's very beneficial for acne. It might sound gross and you might feel like an oil will break you out, it won't. Acne prone skin is crying out. It's very beneficial and healing for acne, I promise you. And then for the AM, wash your face and then apply the azelaic acid and then your moisturizer and your SPF. You really wanna get an SPF. The Ordinary doesn't have any yet. I think they're launching in April. That's number one while on prescription Retin-A and azelaic acid because your skin will become very sensitized. So the three, or did I recommend four? <clears throat> the four products, azelaic acid, the BHA peeling solution, rosehip seed oil, and glycolic acid. Oh, and for the BHA, AHA peeling solution, you can only apply that. Is it twice? It's either once or twice a week. So do not apply that in conjunction with the Retin-A, by the way. The two nights you apply the BHA AHA peeling solution, that's all you're gonna apply that night besides moisturizer. So wash your face, apply the peeling solution, moisturizer, and rosehip seed oil. You can apply rosehip seed oil too every night. Yeah, with the prescription Retin-A, I don't know how long ago you started, but truly be careful so you don't get too irritated and burnt out from using it and from preventing your skin from getting too sensitive. So try to just start out applying the um, Retin-A two to three times a week for two weeks and then you know four times a week for the next two weeks and work your way up to applying it every night. Again, the two nights you apply the BHA peeling solution, don't apply the Retin-A, okay? Do I hope that helps? Yes, okay, we are done. Thank you guys for listening. Please leave your questions and comments below for next week. And I can't wait to see you next Wednesday for Skincare Wednesdays. So hope you guys have a great day. See you in my next video. Bye.